Friends, uh, I'm super excited for this next person coming to the stage. Uh, next coming to our, the next web vision stage is Jason Silva. He is an Emmy-nominated television presenter of Brain Games, a TV show on National Geographic for five years. He's a digital filmmaker known for his inspirational short videos on creativity, technology, mental health, and human potential with over 100 million views across all the social meds. Listen, that's something that we should all be aspiring to. International keynote speaker lecturing on the co-evolution of humans and technology, how we build together the future of the human species and mental health. Y'all, without any further ado, please give it up to the man that helped me pass my cognitive psych test and my new best friend, Jason Salva! Thank you for that. That's it. Thank you. What's up, Amsterdam? How's it going, everybody? Wow, I gotta say, it's a thrill to be here with all of you today. I wanna thank you for being here. I wanna thank The Next Web for having me back. I gave my first talk here in 2018, and my, how things have changed. It's a special treat to be in Amsterdam, bicycle capital of the world in many ways. And uh, I got to say, we are living in strange times. We are living in strange times. Now, I called my talk the Cyberdelic Age. The Cyberdelic Age. How virtual realities, programmable biologies, and psychoactive technologies are converging and engendering a world of pure imagination, a world beyond imagination. Now, for many of us, caught up in the trappings and feedback loops of a clickbait economy, of an attention economy, where if it bleeds, it leads, it certainly feels like the world is going off the rails. We're coming out of a two-year existential meltdown, a dark night of the soul for the planet, everyone all at once undergoing an existential crisis. The COVID pandemic put the world on its knees and accelerated a lot of trends that were actually happening already one layer underneath. COVID was perhaps the most uncomfortable and difficult lesson in exponential growth. You know, perhaps one of the only silver linings is that now we understand how quickly something can change and how quickly something can spread. Now, to unpack what I mean by the cyberdelic age, we're going to take this in three parts. The first part is virtual realities, digital transformation, artificial intelligence. The second part will be programmable biologies, mastering the information processes of biology. And the last part will be psychoactive technologies, how exponential tools are allowing us to transform our psyches and take us to a place of healing and transformation to meet the challenges of this age. So let's, talk, let's start with virtual realities and artificial intelligence and digital transformation. No doubt that's the, that's the on the nose theme of an event like this. This is a tech and culture festival, a conference that celebrates how digital transformation has changed the world and will continue to change the world. Now my, my passion for digital transformation comes from my passion for imagination because I believe that technology is just human imagination literalized. Technology is just the human mind turned inside out. Technology is how we impregnate the world with mind. As the cognitive philosophers David Chalmers and Andy Clark has famously written in their essay, The Extended Mind Thesis, technology is a scaffolding of the mind that we use to extend our thoughts, 
our reach and our vision in the world. And that has always been the case. We are the tool-making animal. If you go back 100,000 years to the savannas of Africa, when early humans picked up a stick on the ground and used that stick to reach a fruit that was hanging off a really high tree branch, we've been using our tools, we've been using our sticks, we've been using our instruments to extend our reach, to transcend our boundaries, to overcome our limits. Now, fast forward to today, right? We're going off the rails. Disruption is the name of the game. Billion-dollar companies emerge from nowhere. Billion-dollar companies disappear just as quickly. The nature of work is changing. Artificial intelligence is like popping through the screen. Sentience is becoming, digital sentience is becoming a thing. And the question is, like, what's happening? Because technology has always been a force of disruption. Technology has always changed the world. There have been other singularities, other threshold crossings, like the emergence of language, right? Try to imagine a world pre-language and a world post-language. Impossible to fathom how much that changed us. Or harnessing electricity, or fire, or the wheel. We've had many moments in our history where everything went off the rails and everything changed. We've stepped through the looking glass multiple times, like Alice, tumbling down the rabbit hole, not knowing where we were going. But in the end, as Marshall McLuhan famously said, we build the tools and the tools build us. We are in a co-evolution of humans and technology. And the reason that these days things are accelerating in this way it's because of something you're no doubt familiar with called Moore's Law. Moore's Law basically dictates the exponential trajectory at which technology progresses. And the reason that's so counterintuitive is because human, human beings, our brains, evolved in a world that was linear and that was local. And now we live in a world that is global and exponential. So there's a cognitive dissonance, right? It just feels like vertigo because it's all moving exponentially and all our intuitions remain linear. There's this cognitive dissonance between our linear minds and an exponential world. What does it mean to live in an exponential world? Ray Kurzweil, head of engineering at Google, famously uses the 30 steps example. And I'll go quickly into this because it really sets up why things are changing at this astounding rate. If you take 30 linear steps, as Kurzweil says, where do you get to? You get to 30. That's linear intuition about change over time. But if you take the same amount of steps exponentially, 30 steps later, you're at a billion. So hold that in mind. 30 linear steps, which is our intuition, gets you to 30. 30 exponential steps, which is our exponential world, case, takes you to a billion. Which is why the smartphone you're using maybe to record this talk is actually a million times cheaper, a million times smaller, and a thousand times more powerful than what used to be a $60 million supercomputer that was half a building in size 40 years ago. Can you fathom this? astounding amount of progress. When you wake up in the morning and you complain that the battery life on your phone sucks or the Wi-Fi is too slow, that you're using a supercomputer that is a million times cheaper, a million times smaller, and a thousand times more powerful than what used to be half a building in size, cost $60 million, and you needed special permission to get access to it. That's an illustrative example of exponential progress, that a young kid in Africa with a smartphone has better communications technology than a head of state, than a president, than a prime minister had 25 years ago. And those exponential numbers, guess what? They are continuing to compound. They are continuing to progress in this manner, which means in 25 years, blood cell sized devices in our bodies and brains, nanobots in our bodies and brains, reverse engineering us from inside out, artificial intelligence coupled with biological intelligence unleashing new forms of creativity and new forms of human flourishing. So that's virtual reality. That's artificial intelligence. That's the metaverse. That's universes of our own construction. That's moving into our own imagination. That's not going off the rails. That's an opportunity for reinvention and a kind of transcendence of the human condition. So that's virtual realities and digital transformation. Now, what about programmable biologies? Well, programmable biologies basically means that Digital transformation or information technology is eating the world. Software is eating the world. Biotechnology means mastering the information processes of biology. 
Because it turns out biology is code. We are made of software. We are alphabetic all the way down. DNA is code. Our genes are little software programs. And the speed at which we can sequence our genes, program our genes, reprogram our genes, is accelerating at faster rates than those exponential numbers I listed before. Perhaps the greatest example of biotech at work are the COVID vaccines. Literally, vaccines made of software. That we now live in an age where we can read the genome of a novel pathogen, right? Undecode the genome, the software of the virus. And we can program using the, bio the software of biology, mRNA, a vaccine that instructs our body to know how to fight this virus. It's like downloading an app for your phone. We're in an era where medicine is becoming like software, and mRNA vaccines are coming after cancer next. There are more breakthroughs happening right now with immunotherapy than we've ever seen. We're about to hit a threshold crossing. I just hope we're ready to participate. One of the scariest things that happened during COVID is the large rejection of the COVID vaccines. You know, this illustrates perhaps an era of speciation where some humans will be biologically enhanced and some will refuse. And that's just evolution, folks. So we have virtual reality and we have programmable biology. Now, before we get to psychoactive technologies, I want to show a video about this convergence of artificial intelligence, of nanotech, and of biotech, painting a future beyond our imagination. And then we'll get into the metaverse and psychoactive technology. So please show the first video. So let's talk about the future of us. What does that even mean? the future of us. It's a look at what comes next. It's a look at what might be. Because today, exponentially emerging technologies are transforming what's possible. They're helping us overcome, transcend, even biological limitations. The very rules of what it is to be human are up for grabs. We're rewriting the software of life with biotechnology. We're turning matter into a programmable medium with nanotechnology. We're creating sentient minds with artificial intelligence that are not bound by the limitations of biology. These three overlapping revolutions, GNR, genetics, nanotechnology, and robotics, together will be leveraged to lead us towards a black hole-like, impossible to fathom singularity. It's like staring into the sun, a moment of a rousing symphonic climax when all of mind leverage the network together, transcends its biological origins, and we become something more. People worry about the AIs and the them. Well, as Kurzweil says, that's gonna be us. The future of us is ours to dream up. Things are gonna get crazy, guys. And before we talk a little bit about the most kind of immediate transformative innovation in the digital space, which is the metaverse, I want to bring up a wonderful line by Steve Jobs, of course, the co-founder of Apple Computer. Now, he famously said when he was a kind of techno evangelist and he was portraying this digital incoming transformation as the holy grail of humanity, he famously said that a computer is the bicycle of the mind. And it's really apropos to be in the Netherlands using this example because one of the things I love about this country is that you guys understand how bicycles just increase human well-being, how efficient they are, how effective they are. And this is what he was referring to when he said that computers were the bicycle of the mind. He cited a study on the locomotive efficiency of animals and how there's a list of how much energy animals expend to get a certain distance. And the top of that list, I believe, was the falcon right? Human beings weren't even in the top 20 of locomotive efficiency. But when you give a human being a bicycle, guess what? They go to the very top. They become the most efficient animal in terms of locomotive efficiency. We're not talking about powered motorcycles or vehicles. We're talking about just self-powered. But that tool, that bicycle puts us at the top in terms of our efficiency, right? So if the computer, if the digital transformation is seen as a bicycle of the mind, that's a really great framing to kind of paint a picture 
of where we're heading, for those that are afraid that this is somehow unnatural, they should think of these technologies as just an iteration of what came before. As Kevin Kelly said, look how impoverished we would have been if we didn't have the technology of the oil painting in time for Vincent van Gogh to deploy his genius, or if we didn't have the technology of the musical instrument in time for Beethoven, and if we didn't have the technology of language in time for Shakespeare, we would have been robbed of so much beauty, of so much artistry, of so much creativity. And we're going to bring that creativity and music to biology. Freeman Dyson, the eminent physicist, speaks about a very near future where a new generation of artists will be writing genomes with the fluency that Blake and Byron wrote verses. Try to dream bigger than ever before, before your limiting beliefs and your reactive anxieties to the things that are different and the things you don't understand. Embrace instead the possibility to speciate, to transcend ourselves, to overcome ourselves. Instead of making art, we're going to become art. And that's where the metaverse is perhaps the most exciting and, and more, sh more short-term iteration of this. The metaverse is the latest the latest instantiation of the human dream to virtualize reality. Virtual reality has existed since the moment we sat around the campfire and started telling stories. Virtual reality has existed the moment we drew paintings inside of those caves tens of thousands of years ago. The impulse, mankind's historical impulse to manifest his consciousness outside of his mind in front of his eyes, in the words of Gene Youngblood. Like that's the impulse to exteriorize ourselves, to turn ourselves inside out. As Terence McKenna Hannah famously said, the future of intimacy is virtual reality. Today, if I want to show you my heart and mind, I might write a poem, I might sing you a song, I might just speak little monkey sounds with my voice, but in the future, I'll bring you into my metaverse. I'll show you the inside of my mind, heart, and soul by virtualizing my insides and stepping into my own imagination. And that's what this next video is about. It speculates how the metaverse will create a whole new space for running simulations, for dreaming together, and it's part of a partnership with the metaverse company called Yom, Your Own Metaverse. And so let's watch the video and then we'll get into psychoactive technologies. Okay, friends, so let's speak of the metaverse. Let us speak of human imagination exteriorized. Let us speak of a parallel universe that is summoning its own literalization, because that is what the metaverse is. It is a parallel universe that is summoning its own literalization. It is conceived first, of course, in the mind, in the imagination, these virtual realities. And then in combination with our modest looking thumbs was instantiated in the world and now lives in a substrate of ones and zeros. And so what's striking about the metaverse is that it is a collective imaginarium. It is human imagination exteriorized and one that can be paid visitation to by many minds at once. When we dream at night and go into the virtual reality inside of our mind, we do so alone. When we dream, we work through problems, we try things out. The laws of physics don't constrain us. We can take risks. The brain can play out all these simulations that can then prove useful in our normal waking state. But this creative problem solving in the dream world is an individual thing. With the metaverse, we're creating a dream world where all of us together can dream to the degree that we can try things out without constraint or limitation. We can experiment together with new forms of governance. We can try things out in a low friction environment, limited only by our imagination and by the unreal game engines that can render worlds instantly into being. In the metaverse, we can culturally together problem solve and design societies to meet the challenges of the 21st century. We can think and act 
exponentially at scale in this metaverse. Billions of us can experiment with new forms of governance, new forms of problem solving, new forms of making decisions, new forms of collaboration and cooperation, new kinds of economics, new kinds of tokenomics. We can create digital currency. We can practice decentralization. We can govern in a decentralized manner. We can cooperate and collaborate. We can compete and make new rules. We can rewrite the rules. We can play. We can play, which again does the same, serves the same function. Kids at play are trying things out, are stretching their minds, are running simulations. When we dream, when we play, and now together, where we experiment and problem solve in the metaverse. You know, Bob Keegan says, of course, okay, the we world can has pause that one. <laughs> Thank you. It's a long video and I'm running out of time, so I want to keep going. But the point is that the metaverse provides a platform where we can collaborate and cooperate and problem solve together. Now, the last part of my talk, after talking about virtual realities, programmable biologies, is psychoactive technologies. Because coming out of COVID, we're also coming out of an acceleration of an emergency exponential mental health crisis. According to the World Health Organization, this is a number I read a few years ago, more people are dying by suicide now than die from natural disasters and armed conflict combined. That means more people die by taking their own life, even in our era of abundance, than are dying from natural disasters, war, terrorism, violent conflict, all of that, still less than the amount of people taking their own life. So what we have in the, in the throngs of all these changes is a crisis of meaning a crisis of storytelling, right? We have these conflicting narratives in social media and a battle for truth and a hunger for meaning and people are trying to attach themselves almost religiously to all these different kinds of dogma for self-sustaining narratives. And so what I believe is probably the most exciting thing happening right now is a new psychedelic revolution. It's the 1960s, but with a new kind of formality and seriousness that's not going off the rails, where we are using psychedelics which are transhuman technologies to, in properly controlled environments, give people guided interventions where they can go deeply into themselves, deeply into their trauma, deeply into their crisis of meaning, and experience something called cognitive repatterning, fear extinction, memory reconsolidation. And this seems to happen because psychedelics in the right environments evoke something called inverse PTSD. An experience of such radiance, such beauty, such inspiration, such expansion of the self, mind, and psyche that in the same way trauma can slay you, the opposite of trauma can expand you. And so what's most exciting about this space is that it's happening alongside a technological revolution that increasingly also feels psychedelic because the word psychedelic means to manifest the mind and with our smartphones and metaverses and biotechnology it feels like we are manifesting our imagination and then we're also having a situation where more and more people who are having a crisis of meaning are taking psychedelics in controlled environments and man they are falling through the wormhole casting aside their limiting beliefs and birthing themselves anew. So it's a very, very, very exciting time where cybernetics and psychedelics are converging. And that's why we call this the cyberdelic age. Cyberdelic age, where cybernetics and psychedelics converge. And this next video, I'm gonna skip the next video and go straight to the last one shows you using artificial intelligent renderings and visualizations what a world of programmable matter and mind that feels like a dream, a psychedelic rhapsody looks like. It's a preview of my new series called Cyberdelic Dreaming. It's a short clip. It's the very last video, please, and then I'll be done. Please play it. We no, the next one, the next one. Exponential technological advancement. And the digital revolution and the virtual revolution is spilling over into the biotechnological revolution. And then we're going to be patterning biology, which is also software, right? Which is also a subversively psychedelic idea that all is programmable and everything can be upgraded and everything can be retuned and everything can be transformed. And then nanotechnology, which sees the material world as programmable atoms, 
another psychedelic idea. So when Leary said you experience a fresh, the hardly bearable ecstasy of direct energy exploding on your nerve endings, that has been made manifest by digital technology, virtual metaverses, biotechnological mRNA vaccines, and eventually nanotechnology creating buildings that self-assemble. We are living in a magical world. And if you could time-lapse human progress, it would look like our minds, our consciousnesses, the imagination is spilling out of us and we are m actualizing the human imagination. We are designing the world and ourselves into being, right? I mean, we are literally a thinking stratum of the earth that is willing itself into existence, but that's already what biology is. So it's biology becoming aware of itself, which is also a psychedelic insight. When Tim Duty said that psychedelic experiences recontextualizes the self and makes us realize that we are, um, recontextualizes the self into a marvelous conduit in a timeless whole. We are a marvelous conduit in a timeless whole from which molecules and meanings flow, from neurons to nebula and back again, in ones and zeros, in DNA code, and in programmable atoms, my friends. And that's what makes the technological revolution and singularity we're living through psychedelic. It Thank you very much for your attention. Hopefully I've inspired you to think big, to open up, to let go of limiting beliefs and have a faith, and have a faith that with the right framing and with the right storytelling we can address the grand challenges of humanity using the power of our exponential tools. Welcome to the Cyberdelic Age. Thank you guys.